Well, it's midnight. What happens when the mainsail won't come down? And that's what just happened. We thought, okay, we'll get the main down. And then we kind of like eased off the main halyard and the main dropped about a foot and it just jammed. Good morning. It is time for after day and a half in a marina for us to leave, which basically means we have to turn Rude Rose 2 from a lovely air-conditioned caravan into our, um, into, our, into our sailing vessel. Do you know what? I'm looking forward to getting out to sea for the bloody rest. Yeah, I'm looking forward to getting going. I'm looking forward to getting to Langkawi. Okay, well that needs to be slipped anyway, right? Straight to so, yeah, Admiral Marina. That was nice. Nice little, uh, nice little sojourn. Malaysia is very, very friendly. I'm very much enjoying time in Malaysia. I just want to get us through this little gap just to look at the chart. There, forward depth sounder. So we have 4.3 meters, but this will look for any obstructions underwater if anything's directly in front of us. Five meter contour, and then we're out. I'm Teresa, this is Nick, and this is Ruby Rose 2, our floating home. Subscribe to our channel and leave a comment because we love to hear from you and a big thanks to our community of patrons. Good morning again from the, from the galley of Ruby Rose 2. Let me just go through a few things for you so you can get a, an idea of what it's like to be on a boat with us all. Okay, firstly, it's 10.15, so 10.15 in the morning. It is 32 degrees Celsius. I don't know what that is in American, but it is hot. It is ridiculously hot, ridiculously humid. I can just about tolerate a sarong. I want to kind of show you where we are. So we're going up the Strait of Malacca. The Strait of Malacca is a strait that runs between Malaysia and Indonesia. So on the west we have Indonesia, on the east we have Malaysia. So Indonesia there, Malaysia there. We have come from Singapore here and we need to get up to here. Now the issue here is twofold. Number one, there's a very strong tidal stream. Now our passage is about 40 to 48 hours so it doesn't really matter we're going to get foul current and, and we're going to get fair current going up there. The problem is that the wind predominantly comes from the northwest. So this is generally known as just a wind hole. We have 5.8 knots, 6 knots over the ground. Now this is with foul current. We will hope to be up to about 8 knots later. Our apparent wind speed is just about zero and the wind is coming from 132 degrees. So it's coming down about there. So we're just, there's just no wind. For that reason, it is steaming bloody hot. So, you know, we're motor sailing in overdrive. We got refueled in Admiral Marina. It's, there's just no sailing to be done. There is an inshore traffic separation scheme. And then there is the actual shipping lane there. And the AIS will show us exactly where they're going and how fast they're going. So this one here, this is vessel Volans Leader. 200 meter cargo ship doing 17 knots. This is one reason why we stay away from them. So our vague plan is actually just to stay right on the limits between the inshore separation scheme and the shipping lanes. The reason is that actually hull four has gone up this way a few days ago. And according to the Southeast Asian pilot and according to them, there is like so much debris in the water there. Like they said they saw a dead cow. There's fishing nets, ropes, bits of tree, and actually to stay in clearer water is possibly proven. I mean, I'm hoping we get some morning winds, but thus far, nothing. Let me just get a quick word from the Admiral. It's very hot. It's very hot. It's very hot. The Admiral, being Dutch, does not deal well with heat. I, I don't like it either. I mean, I'm Italian, so. Are we having pizza again? The Admiral's decided she wants early brunch because she's on watch. Look at this, pineapple on pizza. No, no. But the Admiral gets what the Admiral wants. And so therefore she has demanded pineapple on her pizza with her. And uh, then she can um, sit and read her book all afternoon while being on watch. Cubes of ice cream. They look like raw meat, but they're not. They're yeah, blue, they blueberry and coconut. I can't unsee that now. Yeah, they're blueberry, uh, berries and coconut in an ice tray, frozen. Really good. Ten knots, two knots of current, one knot of engine speed. Yeah, but you're going fast in the cargo ships at the moment. All right, we've been underway for 
seven and a half hours. We've done 58 miles and ooh, our max speed was 12.3. That's quite good. I think that's our best yet actually, although that's definitely thanks to the quite strong tide that rips through here, which is uh, obviously very helpful when it's with you and not so helpful when it's against you. But we're averaging about seven and a half, um, so not, you know, we'll see how that goes after we've been underway for about 12 hours, because then we would have had theoretically equal time, equal um, amount of time with each state of tide, both foul and fair. It's uh, been a very calm day, very warm and sunny and very calm sea state, just like every other day sailing up the Malacca Strait so far. And we're just passing these like insanely huge structures. They're obviously safe watermarks for a bank over there. In fact, one is definitely a lighthouse. Anyway, interesting. And we've got the shipping lanes over to port and they're keeping us entertained. Lots of cargo ships going up and down the Malacca Strait, which I love watching. We're just hugging the shipping lanes for the moment and at some point we'll peel away to continue up to Langkawi. But for now, it's the safest and best option just to be right on the edge because it keeps us out of obviously the way of the ships, but it also keeps us out of the way of the inshore traffic. And most importantly, uh, it keeps us out of the way of the fishing boats and the fishing nets, which is the thing that we're most concerned about. Friends of ours who are only a couple of days ahead of us, they got like a palm stuck in their prop just over here. So we're happy to be in deeper water, um, hopefully away from all that. Good first day, made good progress so far. We've been on the go for quite some time. We haven't really had a break since we left Pattaya and uh, we'll be glad to get to Phuket because we're not going to be able to take a break until we get to Phuket to be honest but at least once we're you know in Thailand again we've got some really beautiful anchorages and islands to check out on our way up to Phuket um, which I'm really excited about um, so yeah there's a lot to look forward to but we've got to get up there first so we've got another I think probably 200 miles until we can get to Langkawi. Oh, how nice is that sunset? It's actually a really, really beautiful evening out here. I'll take you up onto the four deck so we can get away from the noise and have some peace and quiet at the end of the day. Stunning. So nice. Well, today has been a very calm day, which is lovely, always appreciated. And we are settling in for our first night. We have just changed course, which means that we're angling away from the shipping lanes now. So I will miss all those cargo ships. And we have about 193 miles to go until we get to Langkawi. So at this rate, we are hoping to get in tomorrow, probably around midnight. So we'll, Hopefully only have one night at sea and then we will be anchoring in the dark tomorrow um, Which isn't ideal, but we knew that when we set off and the anchorage that I've flagged looks really easy to enter something so special about You know being out here one of the few souls out here this time of night It's a funny and special time of day anyway at sunset and um, to be out here it just makes it even more special love it good morning good morning it is oh, about 6 30 a.m coming to the end of a well, thankfully a very uneventful night what been on from 3 3 a.m lots of fish in the boat very nice to see the dawn break and i can now feel i can take this Sarong, which I've had into a shore off with the warm air from the morning. I'll let Chewie sleep a little bit longer. We tend to have a policy where we have a formal night watch of three hours, three hours, three hours. He's happily asleep. I'm happy to watch the sun come up. But yeah, so we've had a good night. We're touching foul tide again. We have 115 nautical miles to run into Langkawi, which means we've done more than half of it. And I can now see the silhouette of the islands that I couldn't see 10 minutes ago. Beautiful.
morning everyone. It is nine o'clock in the morning. Finished our night at sea, which is a lovely feeling. It's always good to get to the next morning. I'm just keeping an eye on a fishing boat that's in front of us that I've just noticed. And today it's a bit cloudier, which is nice because it hopefully will mean that it's a little bit cooler. There's even some rain over my shoulder. And last night was good. You know, I think Nick and I both slept fairly well when we we're on our off watch. We kind of let each other sleep a little bit. We had, we normally do three hours on, three hours off, but uh, often enough, if the other person, the on watch person is feeling rested, then they'll stay up for as long as they can. So I stayed up for three and a half hours and then Nick let me sleep for about four hours, which was good. And then he went back to bed. Our watches, I think, were pretty uneventful, which was always good. There were lots of fishing boats around, um, but with the radar, it's easy enough to spot them. And we had some lightning. We had a lightning storm, uh, I think it was over the mainland. So that was quite spectacular. Been a while since we've um, we've had that kind of show overnight. I remember sailing off the coast of Florida. We had some crazy lightning, uh, a bit scary actually. So we've got 90 miles to go until we get to Langkawi. At this rate, we should be getting in. I don't know, maybe 10 o'clock. I think if we're anchored up before midnight, that would be a good result. So we're settling in for hopefully a quiet day at sea. We're just kind of motoring into some wind at the moment. Our apparent wind angle is 21 degrees so we're not getting much drive but the sails are still up uh, flapping around. Hopefully the wind will just shift around a little bit give us a point of sail and we're doing seven knots. Oh the sun just came out. I just woke up from my nap to the smell of cooking onion which is one of the best things to wake up to. So Nick's doing well to look after us both today. Every day, really. It is about five o'clock on our second day of our kind of last stretch towards Langkawi and we passed Penang I don't know a few hours ago picked up a little bit of internet and now we are hmm, 37 miles from Langkawi which is um, <laughs> very exciting indeed so we'll get there at night we'll get there probably about I don't know 10 o'clock maybe and anchor up hopefully and uh, yeah tomorrow we'll go ashore and start the process of checking out of Malaysia. So it's been a, it's been too short our time in Malaysia, far too short. Um, and that's all because we didn't give ourselves enough time to get the boat around to Phuket. And as I think you know by now, if you've been watching our episodes, we are in a bit of a rush to get to Phuket because we are putting Ruby Rose 2 on a ship to go to the Med. Good evening. I have uh, 10 minutes left of my watch. Beautiful sunset, but well, we got the full bore of the tide. So we've got 9.3, 9.4 knots, absolutely pissing along. 16 knots of wind. We've had this every night. You get like the winds coming in in the evening, kind of get up to about 16, 18, and then they just back off to nothing after a couple of hours. So for us, uh, between now and well, eight o'clock, we should get some really good boat speed. As I said, we've got the engine going and we have 23 miles to go to our de to our destinations. Just uh, resting a little bit before my watch, although I mean, we're only 20 miles away, so... Just saw the fishing fleet go out for the night. What a stunning sunset. Wow. It's beautiful. Put the all the instruments into night mode. Uh, put the starboard side plotted into radar so that we can see what's going on. And uh, yeah, report back from the anchorage. I'll catch up with you all later. Well, it's midnight, and I'm in a torch in a anchorage which just got into the middle of nowhere. Anyway, huh, one of my kind of like latent fears, and it's always been my like latent fears. 
And I'm always like, it won't happen. It won't happen. Is what happens when the mainsail won't come down. And that's what just happened. So uh, yeah, we, um, we decided because we had to come into a pitch black anchorage um, that we would get the main down slightly early. And also because uh, there was a squall. Yeah, basically there was a real random squall that you picked up on the radar and we're like, what is that? So we thought, okay, we'll get the main down. And then we kind of like eased off the main halyard and the main dropped about a foot and it just jammed. And we're like, oh, <laughs> oh, oh, it's not good, is it? <laughs> it's not what you want. So anyway, we put the main back up, pulled it up, put it down, but pretty dropped about a meter. Then I'm thinking, okay, what do we do now? Okay, let's try maybe putting some tension on the first reefing line, see if we can actually draw it down that way. And that didn't work. Eight miles out to sea, I'm like, do I really want to be getting up the mast now to try and free this? Because we can't sail into a dark anchorage with a bloody mainsail up anyway. Yeah. Went forward and just hauled and hauled and eventually something gave and it went, came, it, it came down. And it would look as if the, we've got a problem with, actually it's not the second, it's the second batten car where the, uh, the sail batten goes into the car. It seems to have detached and I don't know how it's detached, I'm not sure if it's broken, sheared. But that's what's causing a problem, and I need to have a look at it now. I understand it's midnight, and today I just, I just want to have a look now. Unless I can fix this, like, permanently, I don't want to put it back up there in case it jams again. Yeah. We only have 100 miles to go to Phuket, and so, realistically, uh, motoring is possibly where we're going to go with this. Rolly anchor, isn't it? I know, what happened here? Mm, that's the... All right, well, I think we already know what's happening in next week's episode. Nick is uh, sorting the car out. That's obviously not something we can fix right this very moment in time. So, I'm going to go to bed. <laughs> Whoa, this is rolly. I uh, don't know what my sleep's going to be like. Oh, well. So, I hope you guys enjoyed that episode and uh, have enjoyed sailing down the Malacca Strait with us. It has been quite the journey. We are just glad to be in Langkawi, to be honest. Just so, so glad to be here. Roll the anchorage and all. Hopefully it calms down at some point. We'll be moving tomorrow. <laughs> if you enjoyed this episode, then leave us a comment down below and give us a thumbs up. And next week, um, I assume we'll be sorting out the mainsail. We'll troubleshoot that in the morning when we can actually get up there and have a proper look. Oh man, I'm so tired. I've got a headache. All right, guys, I'm going to go to bed. <laughs> you guys do what you're going to do. I'm going to climb into my bed. And thanks so much once again for watching this episode. We really appreciate it. And uh, we'll see you next week. Take care. Bye.